God has a plan. And that plan is for everyone, including you, me, and our guest here. Tatal Gase Linovueti, all the way from uh, Bunumalabu, in uh, Sousabu, in the province of uh, Makaunrawe. And we thank the Lord for the testimony of this young man, young pastor, even though he's a senior pastor. Uh, just amazing uh, what the Lord has uh, done in his life. And we will hear the three episodes of uh, what God did and what God planned for somebody when you make a decision. So let us welcome Tatangasi Lino At the moment, he's looking after the Serua West Zone. Uh, from all the way from Bonobalabu in uh, Sousabu, looking after Serua West Zone in uh, Serua. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to be here at my TV for this interview. Amen. Separately, I thank my leader. Amen. Uh, SLU, Reverend SLU, and the children for giving me, giving me this opportunity to come and talk about the goodness of the Lord uh, in my life. Amen. And I believe for those of you who will be listening to these clips, uh, it will be uh, very challenging to your life, uh, how God can uh, change a life, a young boy like me, from a village background, a uh, village set up uh, to be uh, here at my TV. It was not in my mind, and it was not in my plan. And one day I will be sitting here uh, to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And uh, it's a blessing for me. As I heard uh, today, this is the first time. Uh, that this, this program is open here at MITV, and I thank the Lord that He can choose my life to be here. Uh, this one for you. Okay, uh, Lino, uh, um, when you come from the village, uh, mm -hmm. from a village set up in Malabu, uh, I believe uh, it will be the same right across it. Eh? So, what are some of those, those challenges in the village uh, before you? Uh, you Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Before I surrender my life to Jesus Christ, uh, I was brought up in a family of 11. And uh, my father comes from another village in Bua, and my mother comes from another village in Wilevu. And we're staying in the village, Nukmalabu. It's like we are living like a foreigner. We don't have any land to plant. We ask for coconut. Uh, it was not easy. As you know, 11 in the family, eight boys and three girls. And I was the... Uh, uh, the the third youngest in the family. And uh, the things that we face, the challenges in the village. Uh, in the village, in my village, uh, only the source of income is uh, cutting copra. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, our mothers, our mother, and even in our family, we, we face problems and struggle. Okay. It is not easy. So you went to school in Zamsam? I went to school in Zamsam. Primary? And secondary school. Primary school and that's also a public school. Okay. St. Buddha, near Airport Side. And uh, went to secondary school in uh, some, some secondary school that is took place in uh, Nagel. Uh, I only reached uh, from class 1 to class 8. And uh, primary and uh, secondary, I only reached form 5. And I left my school to be home. Okay. So when you go back home after school in uh, some, some secondary school, that is Nagel. Yeah. You're back in Nukmalabu, near the airport and uh, facing the sea. What other challenges or what other things you, you as, as people, young people, youth, for that matter, what other things you normally do to pass time? And then, when I leave school from four five, go back home, uh, as uh, staying in the village, uh, there are very, uh, plenty and many chances. Uh, I go back and uh, some of my brothers there. Uh, if I uh, if I talk about my life uh, in the family, even in the family, I used to do bad things, even in school, mm -hmm. even uh, uh, in the village. And when I leave school, go back to the village, more and more bad things I used to do. Uh, it's like uh, stealing in the village. Uh, you know, in the village, uh, in the village set up. There's only two or three canteens there. Every night I don't eat with my family, like in dinner time. Yeah. I used to go out and uh, take some of the friends and usually talk about uh, we have to go and steal there, steal there, we have to go and uh, break in that uh, canteen. 
whatever things that we can get out from the canteen. Like team fees, team fees, meat. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so those are the peer pressure peer that is happening in the village, including homebrew alcohol, smoking, marijuana, and, and that's normal in the village. Yeah. Normal in the village. Uh, if I have this in the village, the chief in the village, Tuli yeah. Samsam, he's from our village, and uh, he called a meeting in the community, he said, if someone is caught uh, mixing homebrew, then the police will come here. All of the elders in the village, and even our bro my brother, all of the elders in my family, uh, they are afraid, they can't do anything. But I was the one that break the rules. Okay. In the, uh, village. So when there was a rule to forbid any homebrew mixing in the village, you go ahead and... I, I remember every Tuesday, they usually do community work. And uh, my mom, I, one of the missing now, his name is Penny. And I went to him and I called him on uh, early morning, 3 o'clock. And there was one uh, occasion in the village that all of the Catholic youth, they will come and meet in the village. Right from uh, Napuka and also from Wailio. Okay. They will come and meet in the village. So I have to plan that they, okay, at that occasion, we do need just to come and uh, enjoy and see it. We have to do something like we have to drink. Okay. And there is no money to go and buy alcohol. alcohol. Okay. So if I go to Napuka, uh, Napuka, that is uh, from Maloa, Buda Bay, uh, Tukabesi area, uh, right up to Karoko. Karoko. Yeah. Right up to Napuka. Napuka. So all the Catholic yeah. youth yeah. will come to uh, Malawa. Malawa. And also on the south -sub side, uh, right up to, uh, to Nemal Bale. Yeah. That's where they were. So there will be a big gathering of youth in your village. And uh, that you, you, you people want to be star there. Right? Yeah. So when uh, young girls and young boys uh, come to your village, you want to set up something that uh, uh, just make you and sounds that you people are macho in the, in the village. Yes. So those are the setup. Set up. Mm -hmm. So that morning, 3 o'clock, I mixed the umbrella, I called Penny. I, I sold on the coconut tree and bring the yeast and everything. From there, um, before uh, they come all the villages for this occasion. Uh, and that bucket was from my family, and it's for my mother, because the bucket of biscuit, and he usually write the name. My mother's name is Philomena Dillon. So after the drinking, I hold the bucket and I hide it, uh, where they usually put the rubbish yes. in the community service. Uh, community work every Tuesday. That is the season. So I forget it to go and hide it far away from the village for no one to see. And then on the next, uh, the other week, Tuesday, they have the community work. And, uh, one of the women was reading the uh, rubbish. And saw the bucket. Yeah. Saw the bucket. And your mother's name written on the bucket. On the bucket. And that time my mother was looking, where is the bucket? Okay. And then and, uh, that woman, when she hold up the bucket, my mother was at the back, and when she saw the bucket, she didn't mention anything. Because she knew well, I usually do bad things. They already did. Somebody mixed homebrew, and all the uh, people in the village, they were there doing the community work, and I caught, uh, they caught me from there. What was the penalty for? Uh, during the community meeting, the chief just told me, uh, he, you have to stand up during the meeting. I stand up. And he, he spoke to me, and after that, he spoke to my father and my mother. You have to teach your, your child, your, your boy. Child, your boy. And when I go back, all my brothers, they were waiting in the house. Because they were ashamed of what I've done. And they, you know, when yeah. you do something, bring shame in the family, yeah. you have to do something. Yeah. So they beat you up. Beat yeah. Okay. And that was your, your, the style of life that you went through in the village. Any other story you want to share? Uh, while living in the village, what, what are the other kinds of pastime? Uh, secondly, uh, I usually call some young boys when I'm in form 3, some in class 5, some in class 6, and I usually do this to them. Their father and their mother didn't even know. I usually buy this, uh, the uh, secret roll and I call them every night for them to do their schoolwork, for them to come and, you know, buy it. One puff it. So you buy the roll and call the young boys? Okay, one puff it. One puff it. 
and uh, if they don't, uh, you know, you know, sometimes in the in the village setup or settlement setup like that, and if they do, they don't take the path. Oh, you you pufta, you you are not a man, you're not a boy. Yeah. So nobody want to to be seen as a soft person. Eh? Uh, so those are the the things that uh, uh, hardly we can run away from because it's a pressure that everybody must do the same thing. If they steal, we have to all steal. If we drink homebrew, everybody have to drink homebrew. Uh, like we don't have the power or we don't have any strength to run away from this uh, uh, peer pressure because we live in together as, a, as in a community. Any other things that you want to share? Uh, living in the village setup. Uh, as uh, living in the village setup, uh, it is not easy. We, we usually, in my life, I usually, I try my best to come away from the village setup for me to run away from there because the things that I usually do, I, I try to find a place, a way to come out from there. And I, can, I cannot do that because I have listened to my mother and my father who wants to stay in the village. It is not easy. So the way that I live, I live my life in the village, it continues and continues, continues and move up and move up. Bad things. Bad things. Um, before you become a mission, you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. What 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 happened in your life? Uh, somebody share with you, or uh, how come you change from that lifestyle and uh, now you become a senior pastor? And praise the Lord. Uh, before I can become a senior pastor or join this ministry, uh, no one in my family, even my mother and my father, and all of my brothers, they can change me or control my life, things that I do. But uh, one afternoon. Uh, I came back from Tatsarak. Uh, there's one DVD at home, you see what's, and I, I always want to watch the, the items. Yeah, that's the dancing, the skate, the skate, the drama. Yeah. But coming back from Tatsarak, there was one funeral in the village, and all of my family, they went there to the hall, have dinner. But coming back, I was going with, uh, I was sweating in the mud, even I was wearing my boot. I came and I sit down, and I didn't know that the uh, DVD was in the deck. It was false. Okay. So it uh, went past the items, the skit, the drama, the testimony. It was paused just before the preaching. Before the preaching. And, and what happened? I just came and press play. And I sit down in the sitting room. And when the, the state comes, the preaching, and I cannot do anything, I want to stand up. And my two legs was broken. And I, I don't know how to give my life to Jesus. I think, what is the power of the Spirit? But that day, the power of the Word of God, the first time, it really touched my life. And that was the turning point in my life, that I lived bad things. I give my life to Jesus on that afternoon. So you're sitting there watching the preaching coming? The preaching was coming straight to me. And I can't stand up to stop it because every time I watch the DVD, I just want to watch the item and the skits. That's me. When the preaching comes, I stop. I don't want to watch it. Because the one who's preaching, he usually speaks straight what I'm doing, the, the way that I live. Yeah. I enjoy this one. Who is this one talking about the things that I'm doing? How come this preacher want to teach me? I don't know him. Yeah. And that's why you don't want the preaching. You don't want the word of God. You just want the dancing, the skit. And uh, while the preaching was going on, how do you feel? Uh, it's the first time for me to feel the power of God. I already said that I don't know what is the power of the Spirit. But the, the, there was one, uh, something more different atmosphere, I feel. Go right deep into my spirit, my heart. The day I need down. I give my life to Jesus. No change, your boot, your socks, still dirty? Socks, everything. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So for those that are watching, uh, Facebook live feed, any part of the world that you are listening or you will share, you will enjoy these clips or television. A few things we, we learn from this uh, interview. Number one, uh, sometimes we can't run away from the atmosphere, from our friends, from uh, the environment that we are in. And uh, it's okay. You just need to continue to, to seek the good things. Even though you are under pressure, by your relatives, your friends, or your neighbors. Number two, when you allow 
the word of God to come into your life, uh, God will make change. See, in this case, uh, he normally wants to watch the other side or the, uh, the build up to the preaching, and that is item, the drama, or the dancing by the young people. Now, this DVD was paused right before the, the preaching. So when he played and sat down, and the preaching started to come, he allowed, those moments, those moment, he allowed the word of God to come in. And to me, that's a big message for those of you that are watching, listening to us. When you allow the word of God come to you, the rest is history. Let the word of God do things in your life. Your only thing you have to do is to allow God to speak to you. So many people you could have changed long before that you were listening and watching now, but you don't allow. As soon as you uh, hear uh, preaching, you shut off, you, you lower the volume, you off the radio, you, you change the channel of the television. And I want to challenge you today, and those of you watching on Facebook live feed, if you want God to do something in your life, then allow his word to come in. We'll stop there, take a break, and then we'll come back to the second episode. God has a plan for you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.